Hi, hello, hello. It's been so long since I've done this, or at least it feels like it. Um, that's gonna change though, because I'm gonna be doing this a lot more, because I moved, I got a new job, whole different life situation that's gonna allow me to be a lot more consistent with YouTube. I just wanted to jump into a couple of thoughts that I've had specifically about finding your creative voice, finding your anchor. I've done videos on that before, talking about having kind of like a reservoir of just like inspiration that you can continually draw from that is uniquely about you and your story. But instead of talking about how to get to that place, I kind of want to talk about what keeps you from getting to that place. Or if you've already kind of found your identity artistically and you know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, I want to talk about what maybe prevents that from shining through in the actual result in the music itself. Because you may know exactly what you you want, but that doesn't always come out in the music. This is the one that I've been kind of rubbing up against the most recently, which is I have an idea, I have a song or a melody or something, a concept, and the first question I ask myself is, is this monetizable? And it's not even like a bad question, but the timing of when you ask yourself this question, when you're evaluating the things that you write is so crucial because I think if you ask it too early, and the answer is no, you might be more influenced to back away from that idea. I think it's really dangerous to kind of be like, oh, I have this idea that I'm really passionate about or I, I think is interesting or noteworthy in some way, and then being like, but nobody wants to hear that. Like, no one wants to hear me sing about that. If you have a conviction about it and every time you write, you sort of circle back around to this theme or this sound, and you start seeing a vision of a project in your head, then it deserves a full and exhaustive investigation to see, is this something that I can actually make sound good? Because when you have a creative voice and you actually stick to it, that cuts through the noise in ways that just, you know, functionally good music that's not all that interesting doesn't. And I think a really good popular example of this is literally Oppenheimer and Barbie. Like, I think the reason why those two movies were so big is because they felt fresh, not because of the subject matter, but because of the directors behind them. If you watch Oppenheimer and you watch Barbie, if you know anything about those two directors, that is a Christopher Nolan film through and through, and Barbie is a Greta Gerwig film through and through. This is the same thing for like, if you listen to Adrienne Lenker's Bright Future, that album, or you listen to We Buy Diabetic Test Strips from Arm & Hammer. Part of what makes it actually stand out is because these writers had a vision, they stuck all the way through to it, and they didn't capitulate to, does this fit in my genre? Is this accessible enough? They just focused on the art itself and most importantly, what they were trying to express. And I think if you do that, that's the quickest way to at least getting something that has a little bit of energy to it. Because I don't know, to me, I would rather have a bad but interesting album than like a five out of 10, but if I spend 60 minutes with it and I have absolutely zero thoughts. Saltburn that came out not too long ago, I hated it. I hated Saltburn. But I could talk about Saltburn for an hour. Emerald Fennel, whether you like her or not, had a very clear vision. And that's why that movie connected with a lot of people. And it was like a lightning rod. Some people hated it, some people loved it, but she had a point of view. She had something to say that was unique to her. And that's kind of what I mean. So if you're leaning with that accessibility question too early, what might happen is then you start just relying on your influences or what else is going on in the genre to kind of fill in and inform some of your creative decisions. And then it just ends up sounding like everything else that's in that genre. And so just be careful because I know like for me, I think there's lots of songs that probably had potential but I abandoned because I was like, oh, I don't think this works. I don't think people will wanna hear this. And I just didn't spend enough time with it to commit to figuring out how to make it work. And then the second one, which I think is as important, honestly, if not more, when you have an idea, when you have a concept, a project, whatever it might be, and you're asking yourself like, well, what are the people around me gonna think about this? The people that know me in real life, you know, like what if I wanna make a song about my ex and then my ex listens to it, like all of that kind of stuff, that is like a fast track towards watering down your ideas. You know, like music can be, if you allow it to be, the one place where you have like no filter. Like you just fully explore every thought and emotion 
that you have, you can just fully be yourself. The second you start taking those opportunities away from you because you're worried about what other people might think and how they might respond to it, you're already starting to take away some of that agency that you have. You go listen to Igor or call me if you get lost. If Tyler isn't as vulnerable as he is in that album, is it as interesting? Probably not. This is something that I'm starting to understand. Like when you're putting together a project or an album, even a song or you want someone to actually follow you as an artist, you're asking them to spend a lot of time with you, a lot of time listening to you yap. And if you have if you're giving them nothing, like absolutely nothing about your view on things or how you feel or just the way that you interact with the world, and that doesn't have to be lyrically, that can also be through sound. Go listen to Beach House, right? If you're giving them nothing, it's gonna fade into the background because it's not always that people want to be entertained. Like, yes, that's a part of it, but they just wanna know if you have a point of view. They want to feel something. That's a part of it. And if you're giving them absolutely nothing, not only does it lead to sometimes not really interesting art, but sometimes it can deter you from writing, period, because you are like not in line with what actually drives you and motivates you. But this was something that I realized now that I've started actually putting things out is like, you think people are going to care a lot more than they actually do. <laughs> And so you spend all this time trying to masquerade different feelings and emotions and themes because you think that like, you know, the people around you that you know in your real life are going to have all these thoughts about it. And then, you know, as long as it's not something wild, for the most part, they're just like, oh, you release music, that's cool. You might get a few questions, but like people move on with their day. They listen to your three minute song, your six minute song, and then they move on with their lives. When we have this vision, when we have things that we're like, we really, really want to express this. We fall asleep, we wake up, that idea is still in our head, being like, well, people don't want to hear me talk about that. If you're leading with that mentality, that is a recipe for boring, uninteresting, boilerplate content, music, movies, whatever. I've had ideas that I think would have made for great videos, but I'm like, Oh, but I do lyrical breakdowns, so they're not going to want to hear that. Even when I released my music on this channel, I was like, oh, well, I do rap reviews. They're not going to want to hear an indie folk song. And some of y'all didn't. Y'all were like, okay, bye. But that's, that's okay. But there was a lot more people than I expected that really appreciated it and really loved it because I think, you know, that was one of the first times that I genuinely put, like, me, myself into the music, and I didn't hide within genre tropes or, or anything like that. And I was just like, this is what I'm drawn to write about right now. And the last thing I want to kind of touch on kind of briefly about like questions that maybe aren't really helpful to ask when you're in the initial stages of an idea is literally just, is it good or not? Like, I think sometimes, A, you're not always the most biased person when you ask that question. And B, again, if you ask that question too early, you're not even giving yourself a chance to really let it shine. Bright Future by Adrian. I listen to some of the main piano melodies or the main vocal melodies and I'm like, by itself, it's like fine. But what makes it stand out and shine and be so catchy and interesting is everything that Adrian built around this one idea. Like that's a part of songwriting too, is not just having like, an amazing melody. Sometimes it's like having an okay melody or like a pretty standard chord progression that you know how to build a really interesting kind of like tapestry around. How to optimize just the sound and mix it well and all those different things. It's about so much more than just the individual scattershot idea. If you automatically are just like, oh, well that set of lines isn't good. There's nothing there. And you just kind of like throw it out the trash. You don't even let it you know, like sit in your brain for more than a day, you could wake up the next day and see something totally different. And maybe you need to make some changes. Maybe it isn't the best, but if you just change a couple of things, maybe there's something in there that's really good. I know I look back at some of my old stuff when I was writing when I was like 15 or 16, and I'm like 70% of this is trash, but there's like 30% in here that's pretty interesting. And if I had known how to better take that 30% and run with it, 
probably would have been a song that I would have finished and been really proud of, but because I didn't know how to do that at the time and because I just threw it out, it didn't go anywhere. So all in all, really kind of what I want to share, about like what I'm processing right now and what I would encourage you to do and continue doing if you're already doing this is when you have an idea or concept, a song you want to write, anything, if there's just something that you're like, this, I know it's what I want to express, give yourself the chance to fully explore that idea, exhaust out all of your options before casting judgment on it and thinking about, will this make me any money? How many people will be interested in this? Is it as good as other things that I've written before? Is it good at all? Just take some time to really sit with it and sit with yourself and say, why am I led? to express this. Where did this come from? The more space you give ideas and concepts time to grow, the more chances you have to make them into that thing that you actually wanted it to be. Like I think about Game of Thrones. He took forever to write those things, but that's because he remained committed to his vision and it didn't matter how long it took. And obviously like I don't need to tell you how successful they were, right? So I don't know, just a couple of loose thoughts that I wanted to share. I'd love to hear like what things you kind of are like keeping track of when you're writing of like, oh, I don't want to fall into that line of thinking. You know, like what are some things that you try to encourage yourself to do? Let me know just other things about your creative process, what you're learning, how you're growing, and let's just keep doing this together. This is Unknown Reviews. Actually, my name is Dylan. I don't ever say it that much. I feel like a lot of people don't even really know my name. We're gonna change that too. Um, I will see you next time. Uh, by the way, talking about my music, go listen, go listen, go listen. A C Y N E A. that's A dot C Y A N E A on Spotify and Instagram as well. Um, yes, all right, bye, 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 bye.